Will you please turn to the book of Acts? Acts chapter 16. We will read the first five verses. Acts chapter 16, verse 1. And he, that is Paul, came to Derbe and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there, by name Timotheus, son of a Jewish believing woman, but a father a Greek, who had a good testimony of the brethren in Lystra and Iconian. He would Paul have go forth with him and took him and circumcised him on account of the Jews who were in those places. For they all knew his father, that he was a Greek. And as they passed through the cities, they instructed them to observe the decrees determined on by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. The assemblies, therefore, were confirmed in the faith and increased in number every day. And please turn to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter one. We'll read the first nine verses. Paul, apostle of Jesus Christ, by God's will, according to promise of life, the life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timotheus, my beloved child, grace, mercy, peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am thankful to God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. How unceasingly I have the remembrance of thee in my supplication night and day, earnestly desiring to see thee, remembering thy tears that I may be filled with joy. Call to mind the unfeigned faith which had been in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Louis and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. For which cause I put thee to mind to rekindle the gift of God which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of cowardice, but of power and of love and of wise discretion. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but suffer evil along with the glad tidings, according to the power of God who have saved us and have called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages of time. But has made manifest now by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has annulled death and brought to light life and incorruptibility by the glad tidings. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we want to thank thee for inviting us to thy table 
We thank thee for love us and love us to the uttermost. Thou hast given thy all to us. And we are here this morning because of thy love. Lord, as we continue in thy presence, we pray that thy word will come forth from the throne and reach the heart of all of us. Dear Lord, thou hast done so much to us. And what does thou want us to be and to do? So we just come and Open our hearts to thee and say, Lord, speak. Thy servants hear it. We ask in thy name. Amen. Just a little bit of history. For those who may not know, this gathering began in 1943. Before that time, two sisters from Richmond went to Wabana Conference. I wonder if you have heard of Wabana Conference. That was in the 60s, where Brother Sparks, Brother Devon Fromke, and myself were the speakers there. And these two sisters from Richmond came to attend that conference. One of them was quite engaged in charismatic work. While they were there, the Lord spoke to them, and they were completely transformed. And out of that, I was invited to visit them. So in the beginning, it was in the home of one sister. And mostly the sisters he invited. But then later on, some young people began to join them. And then, because the Wabana Conference came to a close, so we suggested that whether in Richmond we should begin the conference. So finally, we felt it was the Lord to begin a conference in Richmond. That was in 1972. And we had it in the Episcopalian Diagnosis, which is in River Road. About a hundred attended. And then in 1972, we have another one. 
three, we have another one. And that was when Kenny was married. And after that conference, we felt that probably it is of the Lord that we should begin a testimony in Richmond. And the brothers and sisters at that time we all agreed. So it was in 1973 that we started to have a meeting regularly in Richmond. And that was how we first began. And according to the Bible, we A generation is 40 years. So we have been here more than a generation. And we do expect that younger people should be raised up by God to continue the testimony here. So it is with this in my heart that I would like to share something more with the young people here. Now that doesn't mean that we older one are accepted. If we are young in heart, we still can receive what the Bible shows us. So when I'm thinking of that, of the second generation, I thought of those younger ones who work with Paul. And of course, among them, we are all familiar with one person especially, who is Timothy. So this morning, I would like to share something about Timothy. Now, Timothy His father was a Greek, but his mother was a Jewish. And we are told that his grandmother, Louis, and his mother, Eunice, they were the lords. Now, how they came to believe in the Lord Jesus, we are not told. But most likely, they were among the Jewish people who were saved during the Pentecost. When you remember, 3,000 got saved. And most likely, The grandmother and the mother were saved at that time. We knew nothing about the father because the Bible didn't mention anymore. He probably had died. So Timothy was brought up by his grandmother and mother. And you see how important the influence of the mother or grandmother is to the young people. 
Some of you here are familiar with Thornton, Brother Thornton. And I knew his parents. His father went to China as a medical missionary. He was the head of the orthopedic department in Chilu University. And this couple loved the Lord. They opened their home to the medical students there. And many medical students were brought to the Lord through them. These medical students could come to their home, open their refrigerator, and eat anything they want to. They called him Papa. They have four children. Two girls, two boys. I know all of them. I was greatly impressed by the mother. She tried very hard to find a time with her children, one by one. He talked to them once a month and, of course, prayed for them. And because of this, all of them loved the Lord and serve the Lord. So I see the importance of the parents. The Lord give you parents, children. They are not only the gifts of God, but they are also an obligation on your part. God wants parents to bring up their children in the admonition of the Lord. How the parents should pray for the children as they grow up. And how will the parents to try their best to show them Jesus Christ? Of course, it takes not only speaking, but also life, so that the children will be affected by the parents. And this is what happened to Timothy. She, he was brought up by the grandmother and the mother. And they have helped him, even from his youth, to know the Bible and prepare him for his salvation. And therefore, during Paul's first missionary trip, even though the Bible didn't mention, but we know that by inference, that Timothy was saved through the ministry of Paul. Now, after this young people, this young man was saved, He was really faithful to the Lord, young as he was. 
he began to serve the Lord in Lystria and Iconia. So when Paul came during his second missionary trip, he saw this young man and he intended to take him with him and to help him further on. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the burden of the older brothers and sisters. We have a responsibility to the young people in our midst. We should pray for them, we should speak to them, we should help them to know the Lord Jesus and to love the Lord Jesus. And this was what was done to Timothy. So thank God, Timothy was faithful to the Lord. In these two places, Lystra and Iconia, he served. So when Paul came the second time, Timothy was recommended by the brothers at both places. What a comment that is. A young man, faithful to the Lord, that touched the hearts of the brothers and sisters in two places. And they recommended him highly to Paul. I hope this will happen in our midst. And Paul realized the situation. There is a future for God in this young man. So he intended to take him on his trip. That is to say, to help him all in the Lord. But his father being a Greek, he was not circumcised as a Jew. So for the sake of the Jews, Paul circumcised him and then took him with him. So we find there is a relationship between Paul and Timothy that you do not find in any other young people with Paul. They have the closest relationship. And brothers and sisters, you find how Paul led this young brother. Now this young brother, naturally speaking, he had a very timid temperament. You know, brothers and sisters, God created us each differently, not only physically, we are all different. I often say, our face is a very small area, and there are only a few items on the face. But no two persons in the whole world 
are exactly the same. Now, even though they are twins, that people try hard and hard to distinguish, but the parents knew they are different. Everyone is different. Think. God created numberless people in this world, but no two persons are exactly alike. I often say God loves variety. We do not want uniformity because God loves variety. And here you are, Timothy. He has a very timid temperament. We would think a person with a tim timid temperament, what can he do? He will always try to hide behind somebody. He will always draw back. But dear brothers and sisters, our temperaments are given by God. We are all different. We all have different temperaments. Some people are naturally outgoing. Other people are naturally inward. But that's no problem. Because God loves variety. If our temperament can be given to God, he is able to use whatever temperament he has given to you. So do not try to change your temperament. Your temperament will never change drastically. It may change a little bit. It may be under better control. But your temperament is what you are. God made you that way. And God wants to use your temperament for his purpose. So thank God for that. You know, oftentimes we try to change our temperament. We want to be like some other people because we think some other people are better. But brothers and sisters, don't think that way because your temperament comes from God. And if you give your temperament to God under his control, he can mellow it and he can use it for his own glory. So here is Timothy. We may think what a timid person can do. He always hides behind somebody and doesn't want to take charge. But here you find this young man, naturally timid. He gave his timidity to God. And God can mellow it and use it for his own glory. So Paul took this young man and he went with Paul. He learned much from Paul. There was such a relationship between Timothy and Paul.
I believe, brothers and sisters, whatever temperament God may give you, he can use it. And he will use it. If you will give yourself to the Lord. The problem is, who is in charge? Are you in charge of your life? Or have you given yourself to the Lord and let him be in charge? If it is the later, later, that you give yourself to the Lord and let him be in charge, even that temperament can be molded and used by God. We find Timothy, even though he was a timid person, But he was used by God in some way. He knew Paul so well. And he learned so much from Paul as you find in 2 Timothy. Paul said, in chapter 3, verse 10, Thou hast been thoroughly acquainted with my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings. You find there are nine things that Timothy learned from Paul. He knew thoroughly acquainted with Paul's teaching. And now, of course, that is most important. Timothy, even though he was familiar with the scripture, and yet, of course, in order to use the scripture, as it were, in a straight line, according to God's thought, he needs help. So here you find that Timothy, he learned the teachings of Paul. The teachings of Paul are not his own teaching. It is the teaching of Christ. So we find in Acts chapter 2 that those who believe in the Lord Jesus are 3,000 people. They continue in the teaching of the apostles. The apostles are plural, but because there were 12 apostles. But the teaching is singular. Now as we read the Bible, we find that all the different apostles have their different emphasis. Paul has his emphasis. Peter has his emphasis. John has his emphasis, but no matter what their emphasis may be, the teaching is one, and it is the teaching of Christ. Because they receive from the Lord. And after they receive, they teach. So here you find Paul, greatly used by God, 
He is a great teacher. And Timothy, he learned the teaching from Paul. He's humble enough to learn. You know, sometimes some young people may be so proud of themselves, so confident of themselves, that they do not receive the teaching of their forefathers. But here you find Timothy was humble. He learned. Whatever Paul teaches, he learned. And because of that, Timothy was a teacher. He is able to teach in spite of his young age. And then he also know the conduct of Paul. You know, teaching and conduct should be together. If you teach and you do not live that way, your teaching will not affect people. But we know that Paul he lives as he teaches. And Timothy noticed Paul's conduct. He learned from that. And not only that, but purpose. He can see the purpose of Paul. Paul is out busily serving the Lord, not in any way trying to get something for himself. But Paul's purpose is only one, to do the will of God. And Timothy learned that from Paul and faith. Paul lived a life of faith. He said, for me to live, is Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. No longer live I. It is Christ who lives in me. So, brothers and sisters, here you find Timothy learn from Paul the faith and long suffering. Brothers and sisters, we want to live a very smooth, easy life. But if you want to be true to the Lord, we live in this world that is ruled by the enemy of God. And if we are true to God, we will suffer. And Timothy, as a young man, learned the long suffering of Paul. And of course, love. If you read the writings of Paul, you can see his love for the churches. He gave himself unreservedly to the churches. Even to those churches that did not love him. He loved them. And Timothy learned this love and endurance. How Paul endured in spite of all the sufferings he has gone through. And also persecutions and sufferings 
Now, Timothy learned from Paul all these things. And because of that, you find that Timothy was able to serve the Lord faithfully to the end. How do we know? Well, after Paul left, Timothy continued to serve the Lord in such faithfulness that he was put in prison also. But thank God, he was released from prison. So that shows his loyalty and faithfulness to the end. So if you were turned to Hebrews, the last chapter, Hebrews, the last chapter, chapter 13, verse 23. Know that our brother Timotheus is set at liberty. With whom, if he shall come soon, I will see you. Now, we are not sure who is the writer of Hebrews. Different people have different ideas. Now, I have my own idea, too. I think probably Hebrews was written by Apollo. So here you find Apollo mentioned how Timothy is set at liberty. In other words, because of his faithfulness to the Lord, he was put to prison too. But he was released. And even released, you find he is continuing in the ministry. Because if he's Apollo, he said, he will go and visit these people with Timothy. So Timothy continued to serve the Lord. So dear brothers and sisters, this morning my burden is we have been here for more than a generation. And we do expect our young people to come up. You know, if the testimony is held by only one generation, the first generation, And how can it be continued? But we believe that the testimony of Jesus is continuing until the coming of our dear Lord. So may our young people rise up. Give themselves to the Lord completely and see what he can do with such young people. And this is the prayer of my heart. Let's pray.
Dear Lord, we want to thank thee for our young people in our midst. We have great expectation from thee for these young people. We pray for them We look to thee that thou will touch the hearts of our young people. Not because they are young, but Lord, if they should give themselves to thee, however young they may be, Lord, you can use them. We pray that there will be such an utter commission, committed of these young people to thee, that soon we will see what you can do with the young people. We want to see this testimony to go on until thy coming. Oh, Lord, will you please raise among us young people that will go forward and carry on the testimony of Jesus. We ask in thy precious name. Amen.